Hi everyone, welcome to my video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Are you the one who is interested in education insurance? You are right to watch this video. Today, I'm going to give you an information about the differences between education savings and education insurance. There are several fundamental differences in education savings and education insurance, and I'm going to explain it to you. First, I'm going to explain about the differences between education savings and education insurance. The differences of education savings from education insurance are Number 1. The interest given is smaller than regular bank savings. Number 2. The savings result is only about 3 to 6 percent, so you should only use it to save education funds in the short term, about 2 to 5 years. Number 3. There are administrative fees charged to customers as well as regular bank savings. Number 4. There is insurance that is covered by the bank, but the amount is small. If you are die before maturity, the client's heirs will receive funds equal to the amount of savings targeted at the end of the due date. Suppose you plan to save for 5 years, but for some reason, you die when your savings have only been running for 3 years, then the heirs will get a sum of these savings for 5 years. Number five, the level of risk is small. And the last, the process is easier. Next, now I'm going to explain about the differences between education insurance and education savings. The differences of education insurance from education savings are Number one, the results from raising funds can be greater than education savings because your funds are used as investment products such as stocks. Number two, if you, as the incurred, die, the heirs will receive a dependent fund plus the investment return. Suppose you are registered with a 100 million insurance policy with a savings period of 10 years, but for some reason you died when the savings were only due for 5 years, then the heirs will get a fund of 100 million plus the investment value managed by the insurance company from the premium you pay each month. Number three, this investment is long term because you will not get investment returns in the first five years. After the first five years, you will get investment returns. Number four, the acquisition costs incurred are relatively large. And the last, the risks faced are greater than education savings. The right education fund container If you choose to invest in your child's education since you are still not in school, you should invest in education insurance because with a long period of time, you will get searches when your child enters kindergarten, elementary, junior high school, high school, and even college. So if a child enters kindergarten, the funds can be taken. When they enter elementary school, the funds can be taken, and so on depending on the insurance contract period. Premium deposits can also be made every month according to the contract period, and the insurance company can adjust the premium amount according to the ability and period of time that the customer wants. In addition, education insurance is, is an insurance product plus investment used to prepare education funds as well as life protection for its customers. So that if the customer dies or is totally disabled, the child will still get the education fund that has been determined plus reimbursement of hospital fees or compensation if he dies. Investment returns are also given, the amount of which depends on the management of customer funds by the insurance company. That's all about the differences between education savings and education insurance that I can share to you. 
Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.